capital structure policy and market timing. Baker and Wergeler were one of the first authors to introduce a market timing hypothesis for capital structure theory. For in the context of capital structure, market timing refers to management's effort to take advantage of market conditions to minimize the cost of capital. A manager who is timing the market would choose to issue equity when stock prices are perceived to be overvalued and repurchase equity when stock prices are relatively low. The authors looked at market-to-book ratios as a measure of relative valuation of equity and showed that there is a strong, negative correlation between high levels of leverage and high market-to-book ratios. They interpreted this as evidence that managers do indeed issue stock when prices are relatively high, market-to-book ratios are high, and repurchase stock when prices are relatively low, market-to-book ratios are low. This results in higher levels of debt when stock prices are relatively low and vice versa. This practice of market timing has a persistent impact on long-term capital structure, leading to the conclusion that capital structure is related to historical market values. A comprehensive survey of CFOs supported Baker and Wergeler's findings. Five two-thirds of respondents said that the perceived over Undervaluation of equity was an important or very important determinant in the decision to issue equity, second only to concerns about the dilution of earnings per share, EPS. Barry, Mann, Miv, and Rodriguez explored the relationship between interest rates and the decision to issue debt. Six they found that firms issued significantly higher amounts of debt when long term interest rates were perceived to be low relative to historical values. Although refinancing activity can explain some of this activity, non-refinancing activity is also considerably higher when interest rates are relatively low. Baker, Ruback, and Wergeler synthesized the research related to the market timing of financing activities to determine whether or not these timing strategies pay off. Seven, they concluded that market timing-driven equity issuances seemed to be beneficial because stock prices tended to decline after the equity issuance. This resulted in a lower cost of equity for issuing firms relative to their non-issuing peers. Barry, Mann, Miv. And Rodriguez found that firms can benefit by selecting the maturity of debt issues based on market conditions. Eight in particular, a firm that expects interest rates to increase in the future should issue long term debt. If the firm expects decreases in interest rates, it should issue short term debt today, and, at maturity, issue longer term debt at lower rates. Firms that appeared to be successful at anticipating future interest rates experienced a decrease in the overall cost of debt.